just a really fun experiment uh, that once I tried it, I was just like, oh my gosh, I have to share this. <laughs> People need to try it. It's just so much fun. It's a good way to like dig out your embossing folders. Like I said, it doesn't need to be 3D. It can be any embossing folder of any kind. So I just picked, I like this one. This is new from, newish from Tim Holtz called Mosaic. And this one is called Entangled. Um, this ornate one, I think. But yeah, just dig through your folders and see what you have and just whatever like strikes your fancy. Like I said, it doesn't have to be 3D. Whatever folders you already own, let's use those. Okay, so I got my folders ready. And then you're gonna need acetate. And you can buy this in a package. You can buy it by the sheet. You can also use very, very thin plastic. We have that as well. Um, you honestly, you guys, if you have um, the, if you saved the, if you have saved the packaging from like the, um, if you, if you use clear stamps, let me grab one. If you use, use clear stamps, this, this stuff that it's on, that's what I'm talking about is this stuff. So um, it's not, it's not hard to find. And then cut those to your desired size. Um, these you totally can do alcohol ink on these for a smooth effect on, on, on clear acetate sheets. But that's going to give you a totally different look. We're going to do it on very deeply embossed acetate. Okay, and then of course the alcohol ink of your choice. And then you might see this ink pad in the corner here. This it will come in a little bit later. You don't have to use this, but it's, it gives you a cool effect. We'll do that towards the end. And then you're going to want something to apply the alcohol ink with. Um, I, I'm using these little alcohol ink applicators. You, these come in a square or this round shape. And then you buy this little um, felt refills for them. And they just stick on the Velcro. And then you can just take it off and put on a new one when you need to. When I made these sample ones, I, that's all I used. But I, this time around, I brought out my alcohol ink blower. Because I found when I was doing this, there was a lot of like, come on, move. So this might help. So we'll try that this time too. Okay, let's get started. First thing we gotta do is um, emboss the acetate. So let's get some of the stuff out of the way and let's get started doing that. And then we'll get into the fun play time here. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna bring in my die cut machine. Whichever, whatever you use or whatever you use to cut your, to emboss your folders, that's what you're gonna grab. take one of these folders and one of my pieces of acetate and I'm going to put it inside the folder where I want it. Alrighty. And let's see if I got the sandwich right on that one. Yeah. All right. And then let's run that through. Um, acetate forms to the embossing folder really well. You don't have to do any kind of crazy back and forth a whole bunch of times getting it wet or anything but look at that isn't that cool I, I hope it comes the design and the texture comes across on the camera there it looks like it does okay so experiment cut just do a whole bunch of those let's do I'll do a few here here's that entangled one it's just really pretty I like the organic flow of this design Super fast. You just crank out a whole bunch of these and then go to town with playing with the alcohol ink. The other thing I'm, I didn't mention that you might want, oh, I show you, show it to you. The other thing I didn't mention that you might want for the alcohol ink is um, gloves, especially, especially if you have very dry hands or maybe they're chapped right now from the winter weather um, because the alcohol ink will definitely stain your fingers and it will seek out your dry areas and like really, like my cuticles are probably going to be stained. Um, now, hand sanitizer is going to clean them up really well for me, but um, if you have chapped hands, it's probably not going to feel good. <laughs> so you could just wear some good old fashioned uh, rubber glove, regular uh, latex gloves and save yourself the hassle. But I'm going to do it all natural. <laughs> okay, let's see. I really love, love, love this cobblestone one. It is so cool. I call it cobblestone, but I guess it's, um, I shouldn't say that because he has another one called that. This one is, is called mosaic. Mosaic. Oh, gosh. Look at that. 
so cool. So if you have floral design uh, embossing folds, that would be really pretty. Um, whatever you have. I mean, I'm going to do two of this one. I like it so much. <laughs> and then when I was cutting the acetate, it just happened, so happened to be kind of a, I just so happened to have all these like scraps of smaller pieces. Like totally you could do those too, or you could even die cut this into like a frame shape or a circle or a heart or whatever. And then emboss them and then do it. So you would have a shape that is embossed. Okay, you get the idea. So you 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 emboss a bunch of acetate. Very cool. Could you color the acetate first without coloring and then emboss it? Yes, you could. It will look completely different though. That would be tinting this. So we would take this clear piece and let's say tint it green. Let it dry completely. And then you can you can emboss it. And it will look like it would look like one of these, but green, okay? As opposed to being able to seep into all the crevices of your embossing. So two different, two very different looks. Okay, so we have our embossing done. I'm gonna get rid of these folders. We're done with that. We're done with the acetate sheets. Okay, and we've picked out, I've picked out some um, different colors of alcohol ink. I think I have all the colors I wanted. Let's double check. I'm gonna keep my stash at hand. I might wanna, I might want more colors. Okay, so now it's time for the magic. <laughs> I pre-sorted these into a few different color assortments that I might wanna try. All right, let's, I wanna do something similar to this one first because I think it's the most exciting <laughs> and most colorful. So I've got it over here on this clear space that hopefully you can see. I have a reflection from my light. Sorry. That's unfortunate. I don't know how to... Let's... But that, did that make it darker than when I did that? I guess not. I don't know how to not have it have a little bit of a reflection there. Okay. That's about as good as I could do. <laughs> Okay, now I will say that this technique does take a little bit, it takes more alcohol ink than typical because a tiny drop of alcohol ink goes a long way, but that's on a very smooth surface. This is a super bumpy surface, and so it's going to like work into all the crevices, which is a good thing, but just so you know. Okay, um, so you have two sides. You have the positive and the negative, so you can add the ink to either side, whichever you prefer. I'm going to put it on the... I'm just feeling it inside. It feels like it has little wells going down. That's why I'm going to put the ink in on, on this one. We'll see what happens. Okay. So for this one, I'm going to use all just plain alcohol ink. No pearls, no nothing fancy, just plain. So I've got a handful of colors here. I'm using denim, wild plum, butterscotch, clover, and pool, if that matters to you. Okay. So we're, but this is where you put your gloves on if you're going to do it. <laughs> Okay, I'm just going to open this up, and these have little eyedroppers, and I'm just going to drop on a few drops here and there. And I'm going to be going, adding more and more as we go, so I'm going to leave the bottles open. Here's that pool color. See, this is, like, not difficult. You don't have to be an artist. You don't have to be. <laughs> this is, like, super duper easy to do. You're literally just dropping little... You're just allowing gravity to pull the little drops out of the bottle. Just shake it out like it's hot sauce. <laughs> Lynn is watching. Hi, Lynn. And Sherry's here. Betty, Noreen, Tanya. Um, Melissa says that she's getting the mosaic folder with the Presence Day coupon. Good idea. Good idea. Patty's here and Barbara. Okay, Maggie, Carrie, welcome guys. Okay, Wild Plum is one of my most favorite colors. It's an old school color, it's been around like for many years. And uh, honestly, um, Wild Plum and Butterscotch go beautifully together, they're so pretty. And they make a be beautiful orange when blended. And then finally we'll add this denim color. Let's bring this one a little bit closer so you can kind of get comparison. Now you can never do the exact same thing twice. I have the exact same material. I have the exact same folder. I have the exact same colors, 
but you can never, when it comes to Alcolink, you can never make any, any two projects exactly the same. Alcolink does what it wants to do. So you see on this one, it looks like I have a lot of purple. That's these two colors together. So, and also you can see I, it's taking a lot more ink because each one of these little tiny squares on this particular folder are like, like little swimming pools and they're just holding that color in there. All right, so I went my first round going through all my colors. At this point, for this one, what I did is I took this and I just started moving it around. So I wanted to get full coverage. Um, that's just what I wanted to do, so I'll do that again. See, so yeah, it picks up the colors, and look at how much it took away. Right this time, right now, what I'm doing is I'm just trying to get coverage. So I have a little bit of alcohol ink in pretty much every little nook and cranny. And the intensity of the color is going to depend on you and how much it's up to you how much you put on here okay i've got pretty much every little surface covered every little nook and cranny and now i'm going to go back and add a lot more alcohol ink just do the same exact thing as you did before see how much i'm getting on my glass mat that's why you want to have you know a surface that you can work on if you don't have a glass mat you want to put down a lot of like um scrap paper um and it's, it's going to soak right through that too so i don't know maybe some sheets of aluminum foil or something all right now you can see that they're looking a lot more similar because and that's just that's just a personal preference if you i wanted really bold jewel like colors so that's why mine looks like it does so because I'm really filling this up, it does is, is going to take longer to dry than usual. Alcohol ink is actually does have alcohol in it, so it evaporates as soon as the air hits it. But when it's sitting in little pools, it's going to take a little bit longer. The acetate I am using is not heat. Um, it's not heat proof, I don't think. No, this is just like, I think this is just regular traditional. Um, some acetates you can get that are, are heat proof, so you could use your heat tool to to heat it. Um, some acetates are not, and they might just completely like wither up <laughs> and you know melt. So, oh my gosh, this is so pretty. Working on a, a, a white space definitely helps you see the color better. So keep that in mind. If you don't have that, maybe just put a white piece of scrap paper underneath so you can kind of see what you're doing a little bit better. Especially if you're using regular alcohol ink that doesn't have any pearl in it because it's totally transparent. All right, that looks pretty good. I want, I'm curious what will happen. Oh yeah, I can kind of move the colors around with my little blower tool. But for this particular project, I kind of like there being some of the, a lot of the little wells being um, specific to a color. I think it looks a little bit more like stained glass and a little bit less blended. But I'll do a little bit of this. I need a little more yellow down here. Okay, so I'm going to let that dry. And I'm going to move on to my next, pro I'm just going to set that aside and move on to my next um, design. So I'm gonna carefully pick that up. Try to show you what it looks like. Yes, yeah, so you can see it better over the white. And if I move it around, you can see the liquid in there moving. So yeah, that needs to dry. So I'm gonna set that over there. And let's clean this up and do another one with another set of colors. My next one, I will do a mix of um, regular alcohol ink and then have a little pearl and a little metallic so you can see the difference. I'm gonna use some of that alcohol from my first aid cabinet to clean this up and a paper towel. There we go. Good as new. Okay. <clears throat> so let's find one of our other little embossed guys. I'm curious about this one. I haven't done this shape before. 
and this time I'm feeling it. This one has a lot of positive and negative, so I think it's going to look different on each side. I'm going to try this side. And with this one, I'm thinking we do um, kind of oranges, reds, pinks, and see what we, we, what we get. So I have this magenta and this orange are regular alkaline, and then I have a yellow, and then this one is a pearl, and I need to shake it because see this, all the little pearl gravitates towards the bottom when it's just sitting there. So you need, it has a little mixing ball in it, whereas those that don't, don't have a mixing ball. The mixing ball ones you need to shake really, really well to get that mica distributed so you get really cool color. And what happens is the mica is mixing in with the alcohol ink. It reacts and does everything alcohol ink does, but instead of being totally transparent, it's going to lay down a lot of really shiny, sparkly pearl as well. So mix that up really well. All right. Let's see what this looks like. Now, this is meant to be, I think this is really going to be hard to control, like, exactly where any color, any one color goes. I mean, you could attempt, but it's kind of meant to be just sort of freeform. I'm going to attempt and see what it looks like if I can do kind of um, stripes of color here. So I'm going to do yellow, and then we'll do orange. The great thing about alcohol ink is um, when you're working on on non-porous surfaces like this is you really can't mess up and let's say you just really hated something the addition of blending solution will the more you put on the less and less and less alkaline will it just kind of like starts to take it away bleach it away almost and you'll be able to um, just really really soften the color if not completely take it away and start over or add more you really just got to experiment Okay, and then I think right here in this space, I'll do this pearly color. All right. I'm going to use my blower, I think, and see if I can get some of this color to move around. Now, one cool thing is if you, if you are left with some open spaces, let me grab this one. So this one I did with all pearls, purple and, and blue pearl. So you see there's a lot of, it's much, much more opaque, but there is a lot more of that shiny, almost metallic-like. So can you see the sparkles in that? It's very pretty. But see how I have, um, my point was going to be, on this one I have a lot of open areas. As I left some open here, so see that? You can see my, my hand through that. That, you can, that can be an, an aesthetic choice. And if I put it over white, then all those areas show up as white. So if you put that over, let's say, a shiny paper, then you get that cool. Because this is like kind of a cool mosaic shiny paper, but if I just were to cut it to size and have it underneath and kind of peekaboo through, I get some of that cool effect. That's not neat. Let's, let's see what this one looks like under there. Wow. Sparkle, it's like sparkle, sparkle. Um, but, or you could try it over a pattern paper. Let's just find one in here that's kind of purpley. There we go. So now what peeks through, it's just subtle, but having that peekaboo areas are kind of neat. There's a purple, let's see if there's a blue. There's a blue one. Oh yeah. And I have another, let's check that out with the screen because I have open open areas in that one too. So it's fun experimenting to try. Ooh, I spotted. <coughs> Excuse me. I just spotted this sparkly paper. Oh yeah, look at that. And you can see the glitter through there. Really cool. So you can really get a different vibe and different look depending on what you overlay it with. Okay, back to this guy. Let's move this ink around some more. I'm liking the blower, using the blower a little bit here. Could you do this with a straw? 
technically, yes. Um, so you would put, you would hold the straw up and then blow out. Um, I caution you against that because it's just human nature to put a straw in your mouth and suck instead of blow. <laughs> so, um, unless maybe you're like, you know, we're in the band in high school or something and you, <laughs> and you have a natural or you're really good at whistling maybe. Um, I just, I just wanted you to be careful not to suck it. Now, of course you're not, if you're going to blow, you're not with a straw, you're not touching the straw to the project. Just like this. I'm not, I'm a good, like few inches away as I blow this. Um, but the other thing is it does have alcohol ink in it. And if you're down here and you're like, <gasps> take a breath and then blow and <gasps> take a breath and then blow. Even if you're not, you know, you're taking your mouth away from the straw, you still are like intentionally breathing in the alcohol fumes. And some people are just, are going to be more sensitive to that. And plus I don't, I just don't want anybody to get lightheaded. This is crafting. We're supposed to have fun. <laughs> so I caution you against doing that, but technically, yes, you can. All right. This is looking really cool. I feel like I need more yellow up in here. Okay. I want to pick this up and see what she's looking like. I'm gonna grab a piece of white paper to hold underneath so hopefully we can see yep I see a lot of pearl in here I don't know if it's coming across the camera but there's a lot of little of that pink pearl is mixing in with the red and the orange and it's giving me little shimmers little rivers of shimmer flowing around there it's really obvious right there all right so you can keep going and if I'm not I'm not super in love with the stripes I want to like mix it up a little bit here so I think I'm going to try adding more yellow down in here and it, you know, do, do what you want. It's your project, but I do like the color combo. I think it's fun and happy and bright. Get some more pearl going in there. All right. It's just, alcohol ink is just so much fun to play with. There's just, you could experiment forever. I'm gonna zoom in here for you guys too. I want you to like, get a look at the, what happens as I add the air flow to it. It moves the alcohol ink along the little grooves of the embossing. So you can chase the, the color and scoot it along where you want it to go. Really cool. Okay, set this one aside and do one more color combination. Doesn't that, that looks really pretty right there. I know once you start cleaning up, you're like, wow, there's a lot of alcohol ink on there. Yeah, it's very, alcohol ink is very vibrant and a little bit goes a long way. Two hands here. All right. So how exciting is this to y'all? Are you excited? Are you, who's going to try this? And then I think after they dry, like use them as is, die cut them, um, cut them smaller, add them, add them to your projects. They're just really cool. I think it'd be fun addition to your art journals certainly you can make a fun card with them layer on some layer on a die cut greeting maybe i think for a card what i would do is die cut a frame out of a solid color like white or black or something and um put that over the edge like that to sort of frame your artwork but then also to um uh give you a little tiny uh, line of, of, of 
not transparent area on uh, around your artwork that you could then um, tuck or hide like foam tape or score tape underneath. It depends on the color of, um, you know, how deeply colored your artwork is. Um, if it's a very, if it's soft and pastel or very transparent, um, you have to be tr careful or um, consider your uh, adhesive choices because you'd want to be able to, let me back up a little bit here, because you'd want to be able to um, hide the adhesive. And it is also acetate, so it's a little bit trickier to glue that. I would pr pretty much gravitate towards using um, score tape because it's super strong holding. It will stick to the acetate and whatever else you're gluing. Um, I'm not saying you couldn't use a liquid glue, but it would take a long time to dry and you'd have to put it under like some heavy books or something to, because it's going to like resist each other really quite a lot. So I would, I would probably use score tape, something you know, some score tape around the edges or something. Okay, all nice and clean. We'll do one more color combo. I have this really fun design. And um, before I did it, this is the one that I did in the blues and purples. I'm not sure what color. Oh, I also did it in greens and blues. Maybe I'd try something totally new and different. This is aqua. I'm, you know what? I'm curious. What is it going to look like with one color? Let's do that because we can always add more. And now this color is gorgeous. So I'm just going to put a whole bunch of this color on. This is regular alcoholic and aqua. That is a gorgeous color. I'm just going to use this to move it around in all the little crevices. My fingers had some alcohol ink on it, so I got a little purple in that corner. So, But I can, you can always trim this piece down, too, and make it fit whatever your project is. I like how much transparency this one is instead of so solid like this. That's really cool. I like being able to see through. This might be a really fun one to put o um, over... Um, like a glittery paper or that shiny paper. I know it's wet, so I'm, but that's kind of, that kind of takes it away. I need something, ooh. I think if I had the same color or maybe a white, a white glitter would be really pretty, but I think just like it is, it's really gorgeous. But I do think I need to add, I, I can't help myself, I need to add some other color. <laughs> Let's do the wild. Plum, my one of my favorite colors. It really, oh my gosh, so much! It just got really interesting. <laughs> Look at that, where the colors are mixing together. I'm getting a really cool purple. It really brings out the. Look at that! You can just chase the design around. Okay, that's a really beautiful combo. Isn't that pretty? And what, in, in what, what did that take me like three seconds to add that wild plum on top of that aqua? And I transformed something that looked one way and now it looks completely different, to completely different vibe. That is so awesome. Aqua like is just so fun. And I absolutely love watching the colors blend together. Okay, I think we've done enough alcohol inking. Let me get some of this out of the way here. And I want to go back to the first one I did, that mosaic, because I wanted to show you where this ink pad is going to come in, which is a totally optional thing. You don't have to do this, but I want to show you the difference and why I used it. So you can see this is still very liquidy. We need to let this completely dry. So before you move on to doing other things, you got to let that stuff dry. I'm gonna put this underneath so you can admire it better. There we go. All right, I'm gonna clean up a little bit. Hi, Noreen, Betty's here too, Lynn, Cleo. Um, 
Melissa wants to know, does the technique work with alloys, alloys and pearls? Yes, it does. This is, this one is all pearl. So it's a little bit more opaque, but you do get a really cool, you do get the really cool, um, let me try to shine the light. It's really reflecting in person. It really, really reflects the light. And I have this like shimmer in there. It's just not as transparent. Like this one's super, super transparent as opposed to this one, which is the same exact folder, but with nothing, but, but, but with pearls. Good question, Melissa. Thank you. Hey, Christy. Christy's here. LaDonna and Kathy and Carolyn. Um, Jeannie, Robin, Jackie, Shelly. Hi, Maggie. Maggie from Grant's Pass. I see you. <laughs> uh, Angel's wondering, where did I, where do I get the designs? Um, I think you're one about the embossing folders. You probably came in a little bit late. So the, the embossing, um, the designs are from embossing folders. Where are my folders? These are the labels for the folders. So here we go. Folder. So it's an embossing folder. And I'm using 3D ones. You do not have to. But any any brand, any kind of embossing folder. And you take a clear piece of acetate and run it through your die cut machine to create a textured, clear piece of acetate. And then you add the alcohol ink. Um... Sherry, you could lay a blank piece of paper to pick up the accent. Yes, absolutely. So she, I, she's talking about how I'm cleaning all this up. I've got stuff sitting down there, especially if I put the alcohol ink on there or, or sorry, alcohol or some blending solution. I could then take another sheet of this stuff or of Yupo paper and drag it through to not be putting all of it on my paper towels. You absolutely are correct. That is a great way to use every last little bit. Thank you for sharing that. Um, Chris is here, Shelly. You, Shelly liked the one color before I destroyed it with a purple. <laughs> but no, that was fine. Okay, she says, okay, that looks pretty nice. Okay. <laughs> Hello from Minnesota. Lori, hi. You missed the first 10 minutes. What is the plastic? And do you run them through the bus? Yes. Yes. Um, okay. And Vicky's here. Okay. So let's go back to my, the first one I made on camera. This is what... I made previously myself some room here so this is what I was talking about you might want to wear gloves um, this is gonna come up with hand sanitizer um, uh, but if you have like if you get it on on if you have really dry skin and it gets in there it's gonna seep into all the little cracks so you might want to wear um, like latex gloves okay so here's the first this one was totally dry and then this is the one I just made at the start of this video. Okay. It is still somewhat wet and it's kind of tacky to the touch, but it's much drier than it was. Okay. This is the side that I put the alcohol ink on. Put a piece of white paper under it so you can see it better. All right. This is the side that I dribbled the drops of alcohol ink into. Okay. I wish there was more blue in it now because I just absolutely love that color. But you know what? Even though this is mostly dry, you can go back and add more color. And if I was like, I'm not getting the blue to come through because I want that really pale blue color, you can take some of your blending solution and kind of put it where it's a little too dark. Like right here, it's pretty dark. Or maybe that's just or wherever you want some of that blue. <clears throat> Pardon me. And then go back in and put in drops of that blue. And you, it's totally remade. I mean, you saw how we transformed this one from all blue to adding a little bit of wild plum and now we have that really pretty purple and navy color going on anyway so this is the other side of that one of the original so this one if you feel it it's like the bumps are going up and this one the bumps are going in so which you can use it on either side whatever you prefer and then what I wanted to show you is on the side that is has the wells going in so all of these little sort of outlines of each of the i got you in a white piece of paper <laughs> all of these little like outlines that look like little wells hole of the swimming pool if that makes sense i think that's a good way to describe it on this particular folder but like you can see that each of these is like little squares set up in a circle so each little square has like this raised red um, edge on this side so that means if i were to rub over the top 
I would only catch those areas instead of the surface of the top of the square. So on this side, with those outlines, if you will, raised up, I'm going to take, this is totally optional, but I'm gonna take um, this permanent, and you need to use a permanent black ink, you can't use any black ink pad, but a permanent black ink pad, and I'm going to run this over the top of the raised side of those little squares. You do want this to be as dry as possible. But what, I'm just gonna do the bottom half of this so you can compare. But what's happening is I'm adding black ink sort of as to the outlines, if you will, that's a good way to say it, to the outlines of those raised edges. Okay. I'm taking directly from the ink pad and rubbing it, and I'm pushing pretty hard. Okay. Make sure it's a permanent ink. And then let me put this underneath. I'll turn it over so you can see it. Hopefully it shows up on camera. But what happened is now this top half is what has it on there. All of those little grooves, the edges, the outlines have, have been enhanced. And so now each one has, has more of a, uh, a defined outline. It's just a little bit more obvious than this side that doesn't. It's this side is um, just a little bit more muddy. So when we look at my finished one that has it on all, all the edges, I think you can appreciate the black outline. Isn't that pretty? And it's, doesn't this, these look like little tiny tiles that I've like painstakingly glued together? This particular folder is just so fun. I'll show you the other side that has the ink on it. And so the edges, the top, the ridges are all raised and those all receive some black ink on them. So this one is much more lighter. I use the exact same colors on both of these. It's just about, you know, the intensity that you put it on. So if I want to make this one lighter, I can... Take some blending solution. I'm gonna put it on this. And I will go over areas of this that I feel are a little too dark. And it's going to blend colors together, especially to my pad. But it's also gonna lighten things up a bit. So I'm just gonna hit some of the darker areas. And since I'm experimenting, I'll do I'll do the experimenting for you, but I want to show you what that looks like. So I kind of did an overall and that really lightened things up but it also blended things right so I like right in here I used it quite a bit and I got got a lot more pink and purple but and I want I would like to have a little bit more blue tones in there so I'm gonna go and find this pretty blue color and where it got kind of just kind of washed out maybe I'll just purposely put blue where I want it And then you can do that with any other colors you feel like. I wish I had more of this color or that color. Like this could probably use a little bit more yellow or butterscotch, I should say. The cool thing about alcohol ink is it makes room for itself. So you can add a color like yellow on top of a color like black and yellow makes room for itself and it's gonna be yellow, um, which is really awesome. And then if you don't like how those how that looks, you can blend them together with blending solution. Okay, let me put a piece of white paper under here. And remember, we're looking at the opposite side. But now I've got in some of those blues that I wanted and the yellow. See, I have it's looking much more jewel toned. And you can just keep playing with this. Even if it even after it dries, you can add more to it. Very cool. So you just continue doing that until you get the finished look. And again, you can use it on this side or this side, whichever side you like better. Isn't that fun? So I hope you guys are excited and inspired like I was when I first did this to try something and, and play with it a little bit. How did that one pink and orange one turn out? Let's get a white piece of paper. This one just has a little bit of pink pearl added. And that pearl mixed in with the yellow and the orange really well right in there. Maybe it was a little heavy handed on the pink, but the orange, but I think that looks pretty cool. And like I said, if it's too heavy, too heavy, or you don't like it, we can add. Scoot this over. You can add. I'm gonna try this one. Let's add alcohol ink directly to it. Not alcohol ink. Sorry, alcohol blending solution. And 
instead of moving it around, I think I'm gonna take a paper towel and sop up some. Look how much color's coming off of there. Oh yeah, see it was super intense right there and I'm able to like essentially remove some of that color. There we go. I'm liking that a lot better already. And now softer, more transparent. You can see my hand under better. Very cool. Oh my gosh, I have the most colorful trash can right now. <laughs> okay. Uh, Melissa, thanks for a unique tutorial. Thank you, Melissa. I hope that you're excited about it. Uh, Lori says the shiny red reminds her of candy apples. Oh yeah. Very cool. All right, you guys, that's all I have for today. I hope you're inspired and go want to go uh, experiment with your embossing folders. If you don't have embossing folders, but you like this idea, skip the embossing part and just use this, the embossing sheets themselves. And you'll, you, you won't get the texture, but you'll get this really cool, smooth version of adding colors like this. All right, you guys, I will see you next time. Happy crafting.